Many players are searching hither and yon for a contact point which they are never going to find. I played Where's Waldo on the forehand for many years. I was trying to figure out the proper wrist position, the proper distance away from my body. And today, there's going to be no more guesswork, and I'm going to show you the only forehand contact point that you need to be concerned about. When people think forehand contact point, the few things that come to mind are one, arm extension, two, in front of the body, and three, not taking the ball too high and not taking the ball too low. I'm going to explain to you why this advice is actually counterproductive in a real point situation. In high speed tennis, when it's actually game time, don't be so concerned with having a straight arm at contact point. Hitting with a bent arm on the forehand is completely acceptable and some of the best forehand hitters in the world have a bent elbow every single time. What's important is that this elbow is not touching your body and it's still out and away. And what's really important is actually the swing path of your racket. You want to get circumference and radius away from your body in order to hit through the shot. A lot of people are just going forwards, but we actually want to swing out and away and feel like we're getting a loop around our body like a hula hoop that can go as long as possible. And that's where our real power is going to come from. Okay, so it's completely fine to hit with a bent elbow on your forehand at contact point. So don't feel like you have to extend that arm out because we really don't want to arm the ball at all. We want to stay loose to famoose the goose. Now, how are you going to find your contact point? Well, it's really up to you and it's gonna be a little bit different for everyone, but what I suggest is using the non-hitting hand to find the relative area every single time. This should be your indicator of how you should space yourself away from the ball. When you let go of the racket and you have the arm fall parallel to the baseline in the next, this should be the relative distance away from your body that you want to be striking the ball. So what you can do is you can have the arm fall out kind of like you're a surfer. This will also help you stay on balance. And when you uncoil into the shot, that's going to be the distance that you should be striking the ball around there. If the ball is coming anywhere less than this distance, this would be the danger zone. And you're most likely going to get jammed when you go to follow through. Taking the ball out in front is good, but we still want to produce a compact swing. A lot of people are focused on going forwards through the ball and they're actually pushing it. Now pushing is a result of not relaxing through the contact point. We want to have the contact point be just slightly in front of our body so that we can keep going as we relax the wrist and cover the top of the ball. And most of the arm extension is actually happening after the ball has left our strings. But a lot of people are extending before they hit and they've released all their built up kinetic energy. And by the time they get to the ball, there's nothing left and they're pushing with their arm and they're keeping their wrist back. So apply these principles and you should be able to find your forehand contact point much better. If you like what you learned here, I recommend taking the next step and going into my online course because it takes these concepts and builds on them and shows you a complete system for enjoying tennis for the rest of your life. You can get started by clicking the link down in the description and you can sign up on my website.